Do not be afraid to try. Fail. Fail again. Fail better. He who takes all the risks takes all the rewards. This is Africa's Leading Ladies and I am your host, Patricia Esikote. A self-taught digital artist from Nairobi had a passion that turned into a business. Angi Shuki shows us her incredible artwork. Thank you so much, Anna. Uh, seeing what you do, it's really impressive. Thank you. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, what is Bisu Arts, and um, what's the history <laughs> behind this? So, I feel like I've told this story so many times, but um, it all started back in March last year. Um, I was watching a YouTube video, and there was um, it was a a beauty vlogger, and she had some digital art in her background. And apparently her subscribers had been asking about it. So she's like, I know you guys have been asking about my prints. I'll link the store where I got them down below. So I, of course I clicked the link and it was a store from the UK. And the prints were going, the beautiful geometric prints. They were going for about 2,000 shillings each. And I was like, okay, not so bad. But then to ship them here would cost me about 5,000 shillings. Right? So I was like, what? <laughs> and I thought, hmm, okay, so I'm definitely not getting those, but maybe I could make my own art. So it, it honestly just started with me thinking maybe I could make my own thing. And then I feel like maybe like two hours later, I was like, wait, what if other people want graphic art also? So that's what set me on this path. And if you go deeply, deeply, like mm -hmm. what is this Bisu art? Um, Bisu art, wow, I don't, I've never actually thought of it like that. It sounds so philosophical now. Um, <laughs> it's for the African, the African woman, the you know, black woman, because um, I feel like black women, so many times we are uh, marginalized or we're at like the bottom of the barrel. Black people in general, but the women have it just a little bit harder. And being a black woman from Africa, right? Like I feel like <laughs> you get what I'm saying. So with my drawings and with piece of art, I just want to kind of let people know that one, Africa is not some jungle. And two, we're just regular people living regular lives. Uh, we like the same things everybody else like. We're just people. What did you wish to achieve in this specific art? Because uh, we we all know that art is just uh, it's drawing with the uh, paints, pencil. Mm -hmm. So you going um, you going technical? Digital. Yeah, digital, yeah. electronic. Uh, what did you wish to achieve in this? <laughs> it's funny because the reason I took up digital art as opposed to any other kind of artist because I didn't have art supplies are one of all first of all they're very expensive. They're like crazy expensive. I didn't have that kind of money as a student and um, I also thought that digital art there were so many tutorials online on YouTube and they just seemed more easier to grasp than seeing your paintings, you think like Da Vinci and all these, and I'm like, oh, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what are the materials that you use to come up with this uh, uh, this pieces? Um, well, all my drawings start with pencil and paper. So just a regular pencil and a plain piece of paper, and I draw on it, and then I scan the image into 
my computer and I use my handy dandy pen <laughs> and my digital tablet and turn the image graphic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, just tell us the process of that. Okay, so I'll scan the image into the computer, then I'll open this program called Paint Tool Sai. It's a Japanese editing program. It's very good for line work. I'll take my pen and my tablet and I will outline the, the pencil drawing. And since I will be using the computer, the digital lines will come out now. What are the softwares that you use to, uh, to draw these pieces? Um, well, paint to side for the line work. And then after I'm done with the outline of the whole drawing, I'll go into Photoshop and now color and edit from there. Okay, and uh, of course, uh, you see, as you've said, you started as a, just a thought and you saw something on, the, uh, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. When did you uh, think that, okay, this is going to be a business? Um, right away, actually, <laughs> maybe it's the millennial in me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought this would this could actually be something. Uh, although at first I did start just for the sake of selling art. Um, so I used to draw, but I wasn't really deliberately improving my 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 work or deliberately going out and making something. Uh, maybe a bit more ambitious. I was just kind of, I was kind of staying in this safe little box because people had started buying my art by then and I really just wanted to make stuff that they would buy. And how is the market like? Uh, the market, I'd say it's pretty good, actually. Um, I'm actually, because I'm not the only digital artist out here, not by a long shot. There's so many of us, um, but people don't know about digital artists. I think, yeah, there's like a small pocket of people who do know, but generally it's a bit of a novelty to people. So people are always amazed when they, when they see like, oh yeah, you do art like on the computer and it comes out like this. So I'd say the market is, it hasn't been defined fully, but there's definitely interest. And do you have a specific market or just anyone who comes to buy? Um, well, because of my the drawings, the art that I steer towards, women, black women, uh, it's usually urban Nairobi women. That's mainly my market. Once in a while, a guy will buy something, but more often than not, it's for his girlfriend or his sister. <laughs> yeah. And how much does a piece go for? Um, the pieces come, they come printed on matte canvas and framed with a 100% wood and frame, uh, black or white, depending on what, the, what the, the customer wants. So for the A4 size, like <laughs> that size, is 2,600, and then for double that is 2,800. Wow, yeah. wow. <laughs> so talking about the prizes, okay, what makes you stand out from this other artist that, uh, of course, we have digital artists mm -hmm. out here. Mm -hmm. So what makes you stand out in your business? I still, sometimes when I finish like a drawing, I'm like, oh my God, what is this? Like, <laughs> it's been six hours. This is what you came up with, really. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know if I'd um, say that I'm spectacular, special in any kind of way. Um, but I do have a style that does set me apart from my peers, I guess. But not in like a special, like, oh, I'm special. Can't just, it's just, I just have a different style. My drawings are quirky. They're very colorful. They're very eclectic. Um, it looks like the people I draw and the things I draw live in their own world, where just anything can happen. And how long does a drawing take you? Um, it depends on the drawing. I've had, I think the shortest time I've ever taken on a drawing was about three hours. And the longest time I'd have to say, 
because I did it over the course of like two days, two separate days. But if I added up the hours, I'd say maybe like 10 or 10 to 12 hours. Of course, in a business, in every business, you get challenges. So what are the challenges you've encountered while in this type of business? Um, well, firstly, I before I started this, I wasn't drawing at all. Not a lick. I wasn't drawing anything. <laughs> so I literally had to start from scratch to learn how to draw even just a face, even just like the outline of a face. Um, and then if you look at my earlier work, I was just drawing maybe pieces of people. I was drawing legs, I was drawing hands, I was drawing faces, but not a full body. So that's one big challenge, um, having to learn how to draw, which once again, I just used YouTube the whole time. Um, the second, and that's, that's an ongoing challenge also, because I'm developing every day as an artist, and sometimes I will come up with an idea I want to draw, and maybe I can't translate it with my hands, because I, I feel like that's a skill I have to go back and learn. Yeah. Um, another one would be, uh, there's some people who are very dismissive of digital art. They're like, ah, that's not real art. The computer did everything for you, that's not, right? Same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not real art and they just kind of, they don't take you seriously. Uh, I saw you won an award. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell us about it. Um, it was a Sondaka Award. It was presented to me by Creative Garage. They had, the Sondaka was the first inaugural Sondaka Award in, when was that, like March of this year and they, they were calling people to submit their works in different categories, there was dance, there was poetry, there was um, music, there was writing, and there was traditional art, and there was digital art. Yeah, so a friend of mine told me about it, like, oh, Creative Guard is calling for this. And at first I was like, mm, I don't know. Like, I don't know if they'll think my work is any good. But um, I, was, I was nominated. And then I just asked everyone I knew, like, vote, vote, vote for me, please. And that's, that's how I won it. And do you think uh, Kenyans, we are taking this uh, type of business seriously? Or how are we adapting to it? Um, I think that like Kenya, I'm going to say maybe Africa in general, we're in a very interesting place right now, where we are living in 2018 in the rest of the world. And we're, we kind of have to like run at the same speed as the rest of the world. So when an iPhone comes out in America, it's coming out here also. So we, we have access to the same technology, but we're not utilizing it the same way because maybe we don't have the same background information on just how much stuff you can get done with the technology that we have. So you find that um, in Africa, people are, they have the technology, they can use it, they're completely within the, the means to use it, but maybe the thought doesn't even occur, only to a few people, but that number is definitely growing. You're finding more and more people are turning to digital and online solutions to everyday problems. And where do you market to your stuff? On my Instagram page. Just Instagram? Only Instagram. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> if today I, I, am, uh, I, I want to see your work, mm -hmm. where will I get it? Um, my whole gallery of everything I've ever done and posted is on my Instagram page. So what usually happens is someone will come, scroll through, they'll see something they like, and then they will send me a direct message. Mm -hmm. yeah, and if a customer wants you to make okay, something unique for them, mm -hmm. uh, what are the procedures? Um, so if somebody had, they wanted a piece of work that does not exist yet, <laughs> they're coming to me to make it for them, mm -hmm. that's called a custom commission. So they talk to me about it, maybe help me get a feel of what they're looking for, and then we'd work with a rate for them 
and then we'd come up with something together. In Kenya, mm -hmm. art has been perceived not uh, being that serious. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we look at the outside world, uh, like the US, the mm -hmm. America, um, we find that artists make a lot of money. Okay, so what are you planning to do in, in order at least to, go, to get to that uh, level? Actually, if I'm being honest, because when I did start this this piece uh, this business, I was thinking of how much money am I gonna make? Oh my God, I'm gonna be so rich. Um, <laughs> but now, just having grown a lot more and um, worked harder on my craft, I feel like that's not really an end goal for me. I feel like I want to develop my art and I want to help other people with their art. I want to build up my community if I can and I feel like even if um, you're striving for success money shouldn't be the the thing the, like the one the main thing in your mind. Money I feel like is kind of um, an extra to success and people define success differently. So for me it would be building up a community Maybe because I told you art supplies are so expensive, I think that's ridiculous that I have to use paint from France because it's the best in the world. Why can't we have Kenyan paints here that are quality and that are the best in the world? Things like that. I feel like maybe that's what I would be steered to pursue, just making life easier for the artist. There are lots of youth uh, out here. Mm -hmm. Most of them say there's no work, there's no employment. Yeah. What advice will you give them? I'd say, and I'm not an expert, so nobody come and say I read their lives. <laughs> um, I'd say, go on YouTube. Like, cause there's so many people online right now as we speak, and so many young people online, people even younger than me, teenagers, even 10 year olds have phones these days, and they're all on YouTube consuming all this content. Have you ever considered maybe creating some content of your own for people to consume? Or um, if you have interest in something, let's say you're fresh out of uni and you, you wanted to be a teacher but you're not finding any teaching jobs, have you considered maybe starting an instruction YouTube channel and you talk about maybe how to, for homeschool, homeschool kids, maybe you're, a, you're a early, an early grade teacher, that's what you study for. And you just give tips on how to teach your child the alphabet from A to Z. That could also be useful for kids who maybe can't afford to go to school or who are at home for one reason or the other. Yeah, there's, just always, there's always something. If you want to code programs but no one's going to employ you, well, how about you just code something for yourself and just try and put it out there. That's what I'd say. Be so at in five years. <laughs> Be so at in five years. I would want, I I would want to have made some kind of impact on the the Kenyan art scene. I mean, I I pray for the African art scene, but Kenyan art scene would be good enough for me in five years. Um, I'd like to maybe make art supplies more accessible because honestly, the prices are ridiculous. Like I can't stress this enough. Everything is so expensive. It's insane. <laughs> And it's it's really it's really not fair. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you for having me.